What's up YouTube, Silver Dragons here, and in this video, we're gonna talk about the best and the worst types of gold for stacking or investing. All right, let's do it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I sincerely appreciate it. If you want to learn more about investing in precious metals, or if you just want to watch awesome videos about gold and silver, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also, if you enjoyed the video or if you learned anything, make sure to smash that thumbs up. It really does help me out a lot. Okay, so the best and the worst types of gold for stacking or investing. This is probably one of the most requested videos that people have been asking for. So when it comes to stacking and investing in gold, people who are purchasing physical gold bullion, they wanna buy something that's gonna easily allow them to retain their wealth, whether this be over a short period of time or a long period of time, and they want something that's gonna be easy to resell. They're not gonna to wanna to jump through all of these hoops, have these hassles when they're trying to offload their gold at some point in the future. So we're gonna talk about the best, but obviously the worst as well. And that's what we're gonna start out with. It's gonna be the three worst types of gold for stacking or investing. All right, number three is gonna be fractional gold. Now, hear me out. I know some people are probably upset that I put this in the worst type because look, for some people, fractional gold is their favorite thing to buy. You're killing me, Smalls. But seriously, there is a really good reason why if you buy only fractional gold, you're doing yourself a real injustice. And that's because you're paying higher premiums. Now, fractional gold is just simply anything that's less than an ounce, all right? So you could look at uh, one of these guys here, the Australian Nugget. This is a 1 20th of an ounce gold coin. It is very cool, but it's fractional. Um, these bars right here, these are one gram of gold. So this is uh, pretty much as fractional as it gets. Obviously, you can get smaller than that, but it's about a 1 31st of an ounce. There's 31.1 grams in a troy ounce. So you need 31.1 of these little bars to get to an ounce of gold. Now, the thing is, you're paying about a $20 premium when you buy this, as opposed to if you were just to buy a one ounce gold coin or gold bar, you'd probably be paying somewhere around a $40 to $60 premium. It sort of depends on what you're buying. But if you add up all the premiums on the one gram bars to get to a full ounce of gold, you'd be looking at over a $600 premium so that's a massive premium that's not a real great way to store your wealth when you're basically throwing away six hundred dollars i mean that you could potentially have bought another quarter ounce gold coin or you know depending on what the price of gold is at the time you're watching this obviously there are more fractional pieces than the grand bars probably the most fractional is the gold backs this is a one one thousandth of an ounce of gold and so these are going for like over $3 right now. So you'd be looking at uh, around $3,000 if you bought a thousand of these. And so buying a thousand of these as opposed to just buying a one ounce gold coin for $2,000 or, or whatever it costs right now. Yeah, obviously buying the fractional stuff, you're gonna be paying a lot more in the long run. Now there is some utility in fractional gold, which is why I'm putting this only as number three. Some people can only afford fractional gold and I get that. Now, if you're buying lots of gold, your bread and butter really needs to be in the one ounce form. If you buy lots of fractional, of course, you're going to be losing money. Now, number two is going to be jewelry. I know a lot of people don't look at jewelry as an investment, they look at it just like something fun that they can give to their lady friend or whatever but some people do look at jewelry as an investment and i'm telling you right now it is a terrible investment for several reasons the first reason is when you buy gold jewelry usually you pay a massive premium now here's a little gold dragon's necklace kind of cool it's a 14 karat piece but when you buy gold jewelry just know it's not a good investment gold jewelry typically has massive premiums i mean we're talking double to triple or even more the spot price of gold 
So obviously it takes work to make this stuff. And, uh, you know, they know they can charge more because most people that buy gold jewelry don't necessarily even know what they're paying. You know, they don't know what the spot price of gold is at the time. And so they just look at it and say, yeah, OK, that sounds like a reasonable price. Now, if you're buying gold jewelry on the secondary market to actually sell, if you have no intention of keeping it and holding it and you just want to flip it, you will have to sell it to a refiner and they're not going to pay you spot for the gold. Now, depending on how pure the gold is, they'll probably pay you somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% spot price for your gold jewelry. So keep that in mind. Definitely not a great investment. Definitely not a great way to store your wealth over a long period of time. Now, I do have a little gold crown in here as well. Scrap gold is basically the same as gold jewelry. You're going to have to take it to a refiner when you want to sell it, and you're probably only going to get somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% of the spot price of gold. Whereas other types of gold, you could get the spot price or maybe even more. Now, the number one worst type of gold for stacking or investing is collectibles. And when I say collectibles, I'm talking about collectible coins, collectible bars, stuff like that. So it looks like a gold bullion piece. It smells like a gold bullion piece, but it's not. And the reason is because the premium is much higher. So for an example, I have this beautiful quarter ounce gold dragon. This is the red dragon of Wales from the Queen's Beast collection. Now the problem with this gold coin here is that I had to pay over a $100 premium to obtain it. So if I bought just a regular quarter ounce gold coin, not this specialty dragon one, I would have paid considerably less than that. Now, one thing about the high premium collectible gold pieces is that there is a chance you could actually buy one and make a lot of money off of it. So you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> now, usually this isn't going to happen if you're a beginner. This is going to be an experienced gold buyer who knows what to flip, when to flip. They know how much to pay, and uh, you know, there's a lot of things involved in this. So I would say don't try and get lucky and just buy a bunch of random expensive gold coins and hope you're going to make an insane amount of money. It might work out, but it probably won't. You'll probably end up losing money. So leave that to the professionals or do more research and learn about it yourself so you could be a professional one day. Now, a quick story, something that you should be aware of when it comes to buying high premium collectible gold pieces. There's a company out there. Well, there's actually several, but the one I'm referring to is called Universal Coin, and they sold me some silver bullion at a reasonable price. And then they started calling me. It was like every single week they were calling me and they were trying to sell me these really rare gold coins. And they were saying, look, it has a lot of numismatic value, right? So the value is way higher than just the price of gold. And it would be a great investment for you. You should totally buy it. And of, of course, I'm a pro, right? I've been doing this for a while. And so I knew this was not a great idea for investing, although they were saying that it was. And so I told them, no, not interested and ended up blocking the number. But the moral of the story is there are certain numismatic gold coins out there, like pre-33 gold coins, uh, double eagles, right, that are slabbed and they're super rare and they, they cost way more than the spot price of gold. Yeah, but the thing is, typically those don't hold their value really well when the price of gold is going up. So definitely something you should be aware of. They'll actually go down in value. They'll lose a little bit of that numismatic value. So you'll probably break even or you might even lose money when you go to sell the piece. A lot of gold shops don't really want to buy those high premium pieces. So you might have to sell it online and eBay. You've got eBay fees, PayPal fees, shipping, all that stuff as well. So lots of stuff to think about when you're trying to actually sell those pieces. They're not easy to sell which is why they're not great for stacking or investing. All right, now enough of the stuff that you shouldn't be buying. Let's talk about the three best types of gold for stacking or investing. And number three is going to be world and US gold coins. Now I'm talking raw, unslabbed coins. You have the British sovereigns. You have the 20 franc gold coins. You have pre-33 US gold. All of this stuff, typically you can buy close to the spot price of gold, and then you can sell them close to the spot price as well. Usually it's a little bit under, but because you bought it so cheap, it doesn't really matter that much. 
For example, last year you could buy pre-33 gold coins for basically spot. And then you would sell them for slightly under, but really you were doing well over the long haul because you're getting them so cheap. Another example is the 20 franc gold coins. I've got a few here. I'll show you this one first because it says 20 francs on the back. Now this particular one here, I actually bought at spot and I bought it when gold was, I think right around $1,500 an ounce. So even if I sell this slightly under spot, that's okay. I'm still gonna be making a lot of money off it. Now I don't wanna sell it because these are really good for stacking. And so I'm just gonna hold on to it. But these are a great buy, especially if you can find them cheap. Don't pay retail pricing for these things. Try and buy them as cheap as you can. Uh, the rooster is another 20 franc gold coin absolutely gorgeous now the rooster is france in switzerland they have the helvetia or the swiss miss these are very popular and it's another 20 franc gold coin you can see that 20 fr so also great for stacking and then as i mentioned the british sovereigns these are great as well i got this one at spot so as i mentioned 20 franc gold coins sovereigns pre-33 us gold if you can find that stuff at spot which you usually can when it's on sale it's a great buy you should definitely be backing up the truck in fact don't just back up the truck back up the boat as well you're gonna need a bigger boat <laughs> but seriously, when you can get something close to the spot price of gold and then sell it for just under later in the future, you're doing really, really good. All right, so number two on the list is going to be gold bars. Now, gold bars are extremely popular. If you look at all of the gold bullion that sold worldwide, they're probably the most popular type. So the one ounce gold bars are a great option. Usually you can buy them just a hair over the spot price of gold and sell them right around the spot price. So they do great for retaining wealth over a long period of time. They're super liquid, super easy to sell. Now I'm not a huge bar guy, so I don't have any to show off. Well, I guess I do have the little one gram bars here. Now when it comes to what type of gold bar you should buy, I would say just buy whatever is the cheapest. There's no reason to be paying more for a certain assay card or one that looks slightly different. Who cares, right? So get the Pamp Swiss or the IGR bars or, you know, literally just whatever they have in stock at the time. So if you're buying from a local coin shop, obviously you're going to be limited to what they have on hand. If you're buying from an online bullion dealer, just find whatever the cheapest one is and go that route. So yeah, gold bars are great for stacking, great for the long haul. Lots of people are into gold bars. They're super popular, which makes them super liquid. So yeah, one of the best things absolutely that you could be buying as far as gold bullion is concerned. All right, now let's get to the number one best type of gold you could be buying for stacking or investing and that is one ounce gold bullion coins gold coins are my absolute favorite thing to buy and if you can't afford the one ounce try and buy the half ounce because that has the second lowest premium then the quarter ounce and then the one tenth ounce usually those are the main sizes for gold bullion coins in fact the american gold eagles come in those four sizes so we have the one ounce american gold eagle here I would say of all of the gold bullion coins you could be buying, this is definitely my favorite. It's one of the most popular in the world, if not the most popular right now. I think the only thing that could really uh, compare to that would be the gold Krugerrand, just because those have been out for such a long time. They came out way before the gold Eagles. So the gold Krugerrands are extremely popular. Also, the gold Maple Leafs are extremely popular. I only have the quarter ounce version of the gold Maple Leaf, but yeah, these are stunning. Lots of people like to buy the gold Maples. So if you're wanting to buy gold that's going to resell above the spot price in the future or right at the spot price, gold bullion coins are your best bet now the maple leaves are pure gold so four nines fine on those lots of people like them for that reason there is the american gold buffalo which is four nines fine as well that's a u.s mint gold coin the gold eagles are only 22 carat as well as the krugerrands are also 22 carat gold so some people want pure gold some people don't really care 
Uh, I honestly think that it doesn't matter when it comes to purity. As long as it's 22 carat or, or really even 90% gold or higher, you're doing okay. So I wouldn't get so caught up in that. I would just try and buy low prices and buy stuff that's going to be easy to sell in the future. So definitely one ounce version. Gold Eagles are definitely one of the most popular. So that's going to be no problem selling down the road. In fact, if you find a good deal on a Gold Eagle, you should not pass it up. <laughs> when I was able to buy this one, I jumped on it right away. So what are your thoughts on the best and worst types of gold to be buying for stacking or investing? Did I hit the nail on the head? I definitely think the worst types are fractional, jewelry, and collectibles, the high premium stuff. And then the best is going to be world and US gold coins, gold bars, and one ounce gold bullion coins. If you can't afford the one ounce, go half ounce or quarter ounce. Now, if you want to see my video on the best and worst types of silver for stacking and investing, I will put a link up in the corner as well as a link down below in the description. Now, silver really is a whole different ball game than gold when it comes to buying. So the information is completely different in that video. You have to check it out. And silver really is one of the primary things that I talk about on this channel. But I have been buying gold for a long period of time and people have been requesting this video so much that I figured, okay, let's make the best and worst types of gold for stacking or investing video. Now, I really hope that you like this video and you were able to learn something. As I mentioned at the start, definitely subscribe for more videos because there's lots more information to talk about when it comes to gold and silver. And I try to post up-to-date videos on what the markets are doing. So stay tuned for more content. I really appreciate everyone that watched. Thank you so much. And I will see you all in my next video. Silver Dragons out.